because we can see physical fathers. So we kind of lavish them. And those of us who are men and fathers, we've been lavished generously today. Um, but you know, it's not about us. <laughs> you know, because the, 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 God set the standard. And none of us can ever meet that standard. So while we are appreciating all the fathers, we, we celebrate um, the fathers and the men um, around us. But I think this day belongs to God, the father of fathers. And he is the one who, whom we are coming. In. The message is going to be about him today. But you know the thing is that whether you are a male or a female, as you hear this message, is is because God is our Father. You know, we all belong to Him. We all take our origin from Him. And so, I want you to just reflect on this message of who God is. And as you know that well, that's what He is, I believe that is how He wants us to to begin to pattern our life after Him. You know, there's a scripture that says, you know, be imitators of God as their children. In Ephesians, we should be imitators of God. And I think whether you are a man or a woman, boy or girl, if you can just do what God does, I can tell you, you, you scored 100%. So that is my charge to us today. So um, thank you, uh, young ones, for the Bible readings. So those are going to be our texts today, but let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We reverence you today. We acknowledge you as our Father. We thank you that you have lavished us with your love, with your mercy, with your grace, with your peace. I want to thank you that even the things that we don't know that we need, you supply them already. I just pray that you will be conscious of the constant supply of your generosity into our lives. And as we converge around your word today, we just pray that your word will speak to each one of us individually and, and corporately. And they will be better for it as we hear your word. And let us be doers of the word, not just hearers, as we commit our time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Jesus came to reveal God as Father. You know, in the Old Testament, occasionally there are a few passages in the Old Testament that talk about God as Father. But in the New Testament, you know, Jesus demonstrated that God is the Father. And I remember when he was going back to, after he resurrected, and before he went to heaven, Mary was going to touch him and said, don't, 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 because I have to go to my Father and your Father. My God and your God. You know, it's, 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 I mean, every time I reflect on that moment, and the thing we listen to is God, God could have put us as second class. But you know, he adopted us. I know he set his standards for adoption. It's all rights are yours. You know, Jesus calls us brothers. I mean, he's one of the, Places in the Bible where when I say he wasn't ashamed to call us brethren. You know, it's heavy for my mouth to say it. But that is scripture. That's truth. Because indeed, my God is my brother. Amen. You know, God has made it possible for us to, to come to the same level where we can relate to him. Because he has brought us into his household. And the thing is that Jesus made it happen. Everything we are enjoying today is because of what Jesus did. And we must never forget that. And so, as we, the message is going to be very brief, but I believe it's something that each one of us needs to just build on. Let the Holy Spirit speak more to you about this. Because it is Jesus who calls God Abba Father. 
Amen? It's Jesus who teaches us to pray to God as our Father. And he says, it is the Spirit of, of, of Jesus who leads us into intimacy with God as our own Abba Father. We can call God Abba Father. Daddy is an endearing phrase. Daddy. You know, just like those who are fathers, how your kids will just call you dad. You can call God dad because of what Jesus did. And so, you know, when we talk about God as being father, those of us who are earthly fathers, we know how deficient some of us are. Those of us who even think you rank high, <laughs> you haven't gone far. But you see, God is the best. He's the highest. He's the holiest. He's the purest. He's the most powerful. He's the kindest. He's the richest. He's the most influential. He's the most loving. You know, he's the loving father. He's the altogether lovely, as that song says. Altogether worthy. He's a good father who gives good gifts to his children. And guess what? He is the king. And we can go on and on about describing who God is. Yet, he has made himself come into a personal relationship with us. So I want us to reflect on three things today. On how God loved us or loves us. And we could go, I could, I could have 100 things, but I want to just mention three. And I will challenge you to go and build on, on that, on your own, in your private study. The first point is the fact that God redeemed us. He redeemed us. You know, the passage we heard says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This God, who is above all, you know, he's way above everything. He is the creator, but he's above his creation. Yet he chose, when we messed up through Adam and we let him down and went away in rebellion, he still decided, I'm coming for you. And I'm not going to send an angel to come for you. I am coming for you by myself. So he came for us by himself. The penalty that would have been ours, he took it upon himself. He died a cruel death. And for that, you and I are qualified. He redeemed us. He bought us back from where we had sold ourselves. You know, anytime you are in sin, you are a slave to sin. And the only way back is to plead the blood of Jesus that had redeemed you from that sin. But he redeemed us by his own blood and gave us the gift of eternal life. So that is the first way in which God loved us. No, because, you know, if he never did that, we'll be born and we'll die and we'll perish. But now, you know what has happened? Because J Jesus has come, you and I, are, our sins are fully paid for. We've been brought back to God. We have now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you and I can then go call God Father. Because God redeemed us. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So every time it comes to your mind, remind yourself that I have been redeemed. Because I always tell people, if you don't do due diligence to sort, to bring truth into your life, there are a million and one ways that the enemy will use to pull you away. So you need to be convinced that indeed, I have been bought with a price. I have been bought with a price. And that price is not price of bulls, I mean, blood of bulls and, and, and um, animals, but by the precious blood of the sinless Son of God. That is what has brought us back to God. So we have been redeemed. 
I have been redeemed. So say it to your neighbor right now. Say, I have been redeemed. You know, because when, when that truth settles into you, you know, there's one thing that the enemy cannot steal is the knowledge that has become resident within you. And that is why he, he, he stops us short from acquiring the right kind of knowledge. You know, it's very easy for you to put on the newspaper, or to, to put on the television, and just suck in all the news, particularly this time of election, just keep rolling from one place to another. He, he will love that, because those things are transcendent, those, they don't mean much, you understand? And some of them are even not true anyway. But when you want to get into truth, you know, I find myself doing it. Sometimes you, I want to switch on to a, a, a Christian channel like Revelation TV or God TV or whatever. But I feel sport. Come on, let's go there. Or news. And you know the easiest one is news and sport. So sometimes I have to beat myself, say, go back to the Bible channel. Because sometimes you say, it's exciting looking at sports, you understand? Mm -hmm. Things are moving, everybody's on news. They're spinning all kinds of stories. But truth is truth. And so you've got to pull yourself back, you know? Because I am the redeemed of the Lord. I know the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to constantly refresh yourself with the word of God. Because the word of God is the food for your spirit. Is the food for your spirit, for your spirit man. God, God created us as a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And if you want to really grow spiritually, you need to feed your spirit person. Amen? And the second point is, God made us part of his family. It was enough for him to, to have saved us. You know, remember the story of the, the, the Good Samaritan? He had that person who was beaten and whatever, put in hospital to be cured and looked after, but he never brought him into his family, did he? At least the Bible didn't record that. I know God did not just save you, did not just redeem you and I, but he then brought us into his family. John 1.12 says, as many as... He gave us the power to become children of God, the authority to become children of God. So we can lay claims to being child, children of God. Because it's God's prerogative and he exercised it towards us to bring us into his family. He adopted us, and as I said, with full rights. And you know, it's, it's, it might not sound great, but let me just read this this. this passage that was read earlier on, I'll read it um, in a couple of translations. It says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. You know, that's, that shows that it was a premeditated thought that he did. He wanted to lavish you. You know, if I wanted to give someone a gift and I'm looking at perhaps their needs, I can say perhaps they need a shirt or they need um, whatever. But he said, I'm going to give you, as I decide, and you know, God is unlimited. He's, he has, resources, resources are just, it, it can never be finished. So he decided that he was going to lavish us with his law, that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. So he decided it, and he's telling us, that's who you and I are now. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be, be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who, who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Listen to this in the message. He says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called children of God. Imagine you and I who are rebels before we became Christians. 
Now we can say we are children of God. The same status as Jesus. Can you imagine? That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us as or take us seriously. You know, if you just go to someone and say, I'm a child of God, you're going to say, where did you wake up from? But that's truth. That's why you need to convince yourself before you say, because sometimes when you say some of these things and someone puts doubt in you, you may think, that's true. Imagine. Imagine I told a lie yesterday. I, instead of going to work, I said I was, I, I said I was, uh, there was train strike or train delays. But as I woke up late, and so you want to disqualify yourself, and the enemy will begin to feed on that. But if you've already convinced yourself, it's too late. So it says, that's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously, because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. That's why it's important for us to know who God is to us, our Father. So as you meditate on what he says he is to you, even just like father of the fatherless, imagine, you may not see your earthly father, but you know there's a father who is watching over you and looking after you. And this father is perfect. You know, is that not, not comforting? You know, that's so, so, so powerful. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. It's staying, stating, stating it again. You know, sometimes something needs to be repeated. As I said, how many ears have you got? It's not just, sometimes you need to hear. That's why God speaks. If you, if you study Hebrew, you know, that's why God repeats things. Because he wants us to catch it. Because most of us, what we do is, he comes in here, we block this one, and we forget it. And of course, the enemy comes quickly to snatch it from us. But when you hear it, you know, when you are training a child, you know, and you keep telling them, and teachers, will, 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 they, they keep repeating things so that it can sink in. Amen? So it's important for us to, to convince ourselves that we are truly children of God and we belong to God's family. You know, I, you know I, I saw two things that really touched me this week. And many people perhaps have seen it. Perhaps you've, if that's your profile image. There are some lions, like the dad and the mom and two, whatever. Really, I mean, lions are fearsome. You don't want to meet them when you're not prepared. <laughs> so they, they had this, this image, and it says, underneath it says, you see the dad, I mean, you ain't going to mess around with any lion. And it says, family is not just an important thing. It's everything. You know what that said to me? God is backing you up all the way. He has your back because you are in his family. You are in his family. And you know what family does? Family looks after each other. You know, God has demonstrated it to us. That's why I'm telling you there are angels that God has assigned to you and I right now to act on your behalf. That's why sometimes you need to get yourself into the groove of what the Bible says. It says it gives his angels charge over us to guard us in all our ways. How many of us actually use the things that God has put in at our disposal as members of his family? You know, we who are members of his family are the ones that have these benefits. But if we don't know it or we don't use it, it's not going to benefit us much. That's why it's so important for you to you know, get yourself into things of God because God has made it possible. We, we are protected. We are protected, you know, because God, you are in his family. You are in his family. And you know, the other thing with family is that those of us who are, who are parents, you know, sometimes things may not be convenient for you. No matter where I am, if anybody calls me, any of my members of my family calls me, I, I may be with King Charles, I will take that call. I am telling you. You know why? Because this is family. The same way with God. You know, and I read something that uh, um, Pastor Tim Keller wrote. He said, the only person 
Who dares wake up a king at 3 a.m. for a glass of water is a child. No matter how big you are, king, queen, or whoever you are, when a child says, I need a feed, you better listen. That's how your father is viewing you right now. You know, that's why he says, he who keeps you neither slumbers nor sleeps. You know, no matter, you, it, there's no off-limit time to call God. You might be in any trouble at 1 a.m., 3 p.m., 12 midnight, God is available because we are in the family. And we need to, 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 to use what, it belongs to, what belongs to you as members of that royal family. Because it's not just a family, this is the highest family in the universe. And it's got everything ready to, to look after you. Amen? And then lastly, you are never alone. You are never alone. You know, we sang it earlier on in The Good, Good Father, which we're going to hear in a moment as well. But you know, God has come to live inside of you. This same God, who is above everything, has devised a method for him to be inside of you and I. Which means, no matter what the situation is, no matter what time it is, no matter when it is, he's available. Is a prayer away. And you need to be conscious of that presence in your life. Because it's God inside of us. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. It's part of the Trinity. And he, because he's spirit, you know, he needs a body to function. And he has chosen to be inside you, inside me, inside everyone that has made Jesus the Lord of their life. Amen? And so you have God with you all the time. You are never alone. Even at the most troubled time, God is there. You know, when you are the happiest, God is there. When you have nobody to, to be with you, He is there. And you just need to be reminded that I will never be alone for the rest of eternity because God is inside of me. And that is the end of the message, but I want us to, to, to reflect on those three things. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. Let's just practice right now. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. I am the redeemed of the Lord. And I will continue to say it, even to the enemy's trepidation. You know, the devil doesn't want us to say it, you know, because he knows this guy, this girl, understand who she is. You know, we need to know who we are. You know, God has lavished his love upon us and we have to receive that love. You know, he has given us these things as an act of grace and mercy. And all we need to do is just to receive it and to begin to walk like it. That's why I never walk with my head down. You know why? You know, I, I, I have pity for those who don't like me, who call me names. In, I'm serious, because I know who I am. So when I'm going and someone is beginning to do something to you, you just need to say, you know who my dad is? Exactly. My dad, and my dad loves me. His Bible even says, my dad is dancing over me with joy. He's rejoicing over me. So you can, you can do I remember during this, um, if I go over time, correct me. During COVID, we were going to buy something in Tesco's. And um, so they, 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 we had to line up and so on and so forth. And they were trying to limit us and that kind of thing. And this guy picked me up. And he was very rough with me. Very rough. His dentally is the same, man, same color as I am. And he was very rough. But he's a big lad. I'm mean, taller than JD, bigger than Reginald. And he picked on me. And I just, for a moment, I looked at him. If I decided to pick a fight, he would beat me flat down. But I was conscious I had an angel anyway, 
So he wouldn't be able to do that. So what would I do? I just said, God, open his eyes and change his. Because he, he had no, I did not do anything wrong. And he picked on me and said, Should I call fire now? You know, sometimes that is the default position. But I said, Let's have mercy on him. I know when I then entered and I then saw him, I think he reflected over what he did. And he wanted to come near me to come and be doing pleasantries. And I said, Should I give him that opportunity? I know because I was still really in, in the fact that what he did to me. But what came to me immediately was that I know who I am. I'm a child of God. You might think that, and I think it was because he was a security man. He was trying to please this. He wanted to, you know, sometimes, you know what security people want to do? They want to get a scapegoat. Whether they are guilty or not. No, it's true. When a policeman wants, when, if they give them a quota, and they act, go after you. And it's happened to me before. Because they want to know how many people you actually arrested today. But when they pick on you as a child of God and you haven't done anything wrong, just remember who you are. Amen? So it's important. It's important. So as we go from here today, God is your father. God is my father. That's who, who, who he is. And we're going to listen to this song right now. And after that, I want us to pray. Before We're going to pray with two passages. The first one is the fact that God, James 1.17, God says, every good and perfect gift comes from him, the father of light, in whom there's no variableness of change. The thing is that, Every good gift. What good do you need in your life today? What good is missing in your life? I want you to use this Father's Day as a point of contact. And then I believe the Lord wants us to pray the Father's blessing upon each one of us in this church. The Father's blessing. You know, the Father has a blessing to dispense to every one of us. Because He's generous. He's generous. I want us to, 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 to be in an attitude of wanting to receive from him. So let's listen to this song right now, and then we'll pray afterwards. Oh, I heard a thousand stories what they think you're like, but I tender whisper of love, the dead of nothing did you tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father to you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To why, to why, to why. Oh, when I was Really searching for an answer, father, but only you. We're all searching for an answer, only you can provide, because you know just what we need to be for me. Say a word for the good of the father. It's a 
Listen for two more minutes and then we will, we will pray. Oh, it's love so undeniable. I can hardly sleep. Peace so unexplainable. I can't hardly think as you called me, deeper still as you called me, deeper still as you called me, deeper still to love me, love me, love me, love so you are it's it's you know, James 1, 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. You know, each one of us, we need good things in our lives. We need goodness of God. I don't know what you are expecting today, but I, I want us to pray and ask God to give us a Father's Day gift you know, to bless us from his heart of, of, of generosity. He knows exactly what each one of us needs. Even before we open our mouth, he understands what we need. Perhaps your need is emotional. Perhaps your need is, is physical. Perhaps it is social. Perhaps it's, it's, it's about things, material. He understands. He created you. You know, Psalm 139 that we, we, we listened to earlier on. You know, God knows you. He knows you and I completely. And I just want us to be in a place, in a mode where we want to receive. We want to receive from the hand of the one who has to give without finding fault. And I want to ask the Lord today to visit us and to give each one of us our Father's Day gift that He chooses because He knows us. So just stretch out your hands right now and be, be ready to receive because I believe God really wants to, 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 to bless you and I with something 
that is going to be, you know, you will remember because on the Father's Day 2024, God gave me this gift. I see when God shows up in each of our lives, our lives can never remain the same. So Heavenly Father, we, your children, have come with open arms and with hearts of gratitude. First of all, that you are the Father in our lives. We want to thank you for what you did to redeem us, to bring us into your family, and to give us the Holy Spirit so that we will never be alone. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask right now that you give each one of us a special gift today on this Father's Day, because it's your day. We ask you to give us a special gift, a gift that will, will change, transform our whole existence. Whether we are adults or children, I ask for that gift to be imparted to us right now in the name of Jesus, because it's your nature to give good gifts. It's your nature to give perfect gifts because you're a perfect dad. So I ask that you give us. No, we will not ask you for bread and you will give us a stone. The Bible says, I want to thank you right now that you have it in you to give. So Father, give each one of us in this church, even those who are not here, oh God, give us a special gift on this Father's Day. A gift that will transform our lives and will get us to where you want us to be. Father, perhaps there are fathers in this place who have regrets of what they could have done, but have, have not done. I pray that you compensate in the name of Jesus. Perhaps there are people that have felt that their own fathers did not do what they ought to have done. But we've heard today that you are the father of the father. You are the greatest father. You are the best father. You are the perfect father. I pray that you reveal yourself to such people as the perfect father. And those who are holding their, their fathers or mothers even in unforgiveness because of what they did to them, I pray that you give them a heart to release them right now from, unfor from, from unforgiveness, that they will forgive them because there is a father that is able to compensate and even make up and do much more than our earthly parents would have done. I pray in the name of Jesus. That will be our experience today in the name of Jesus. But I want to thank you right now that from this moment forward, we will begin to see you as our father. And Lord, our lives will not be the same again. Everywhere we walk, we know that our father works in us. Our Father thinks in us. Our Father is resident in us. Because by the Holy Spirit, He has come to live within us. Because Jesus says in John, 7, John, John 14, 23, that the Father and the Son will come and reside within you if you take Him, as though if you love Him. And Lord, we confess that we love you right now. And we, we value the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I just pray that from this moment forward, we will walk in that consciousness that we are not alone. Even when we feel lonely, we will know that we are not alone. I pray that those of us who feel that we, we have a void in our lives, oh God, that you come and fill that void. I pray that those who, of us who have anticipation of what life should be, that you come and show us, even those of us who have dreams of a bigger tomorrow, Lord, I pray that you more than surpass those dreams in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves to you right now. And we just say to you, oh God, you are our Father. You've loved us. And we are loved by you. And that's who we are. And we confess that right now in Jesus' name. Amen.